P2RX6 here back for another third party review and today we're going to be looking at PP05 Weapon Specialist. Um, I have PP05M I think it is, the uh, ratchet version uh, in my big bad toy store pile of loot but this one I had shipped from uh, TF Source so I have this one here, I'll do ratchet eventually. Standard fair box. Um, on the side is just a picture of Ironhide's head in the back shows you all his tech specs as well as this bio here which from my understanding is a pretty good bio um, if you guys want to read it hopefully it's clear enough you can just kind of pause the video as you're reading through it so there you go uh, inside the box, you get, of course, one of these little card things, telling his stats and just kind of showing things. And then you get these instructions, which you're immediately going to just get rid of because they are awful. Now, one of the big draws for this guy was just all his accessories that you get. And you'll see here, I've got the two movie style cannons a knife with a three millimeter clip point there so you can actually attach it we'll hold on to that for a second this is uh, not a functioning missile launcher um, doesn't come apart this thing can spin uh, it does have rotation here and what it is is actually uh, the generation one in his base mode had this little thing going on uh, on the back of the trailer so it's just kind of like a handheld version of what the generation one toy had you have this awesome sniper rifle um, it does look a bit big for preceptor but I've seen it done and you could attach the knife kinda like a bayonet but it's a little bit far back for a bayonet on this gun but it's attachable nonetheless um, also Worth noting that this can be pivoted around and the handle is on a ball joint over here. So, pretty cool. Whoops, dropping things. You get two more IDW styled heads. Um, I like the more G1 inspired head. So I don't use these. These probably would look better if the mouth had some black in it. And I may give that a try later on and see if I like it any better with that. You get, well, while we have the heads, you get, let's bring this back to the center here, this little blue piece here, which is supposed to be like a targeting thing. All it does is pull in half, and it fits right on any of the three heads here. And then you just kind of piece it back together which can be tricky for big fingers hold on <laughs> alright let's try this again one more time you get the visor which can be tricky for big fingers come on big fingers let's do this okay There you go. A like targeting thing for any of his faces. I don't use it. It just stays in the box. But it's there if you like it. I actually use the uh, movie cannon a lot because uh, I like them a lot more than I expected I was going to. You get a like shoulder cannon thing basically holds it and it, this part would sit on the back of his shoulder. Um, you can attach the knife to the end here if you so choose. You get the two uh, things he used in Generation 1, uh, which I believe are multiple fluid dispensers. They can dispense any type of fluid, and I think he was dispensing cement, if I recall correct, in Generation 1. You get a little communications thing, focus, which is pretty cool. Three millimeter clip, you can put it on multiple things. 
you get another generation one throwback weapon in this uh, little gun and then you get of course the two saw blades of doom which do spin rather nicely see mech tech you could have just done that and I would have been happy pretty awesome and then of course there is Ironhide himself <clears throat> now if you're like me you go he never had this chrome grill and the first thing you'll try to do is get it off very easy seems a little scary at first what you're just gonna do is turn and pull this down and it feels weird but actually how it's working is you're unplugging this little tabbed connector from up here so you're not even hurting anything at all by bending it in and out it just bends in bends out very easy no stressed plastic nothing like that <clears throat> now I will say the top of this it can be a little bit frustrating because you can see mine doesn't sit down all the way and it seems to vary based on the arms inside the body sometimes it sits a little bit nicer sometimes it sticks up uh, I'm not entirely sure about what can be done I might try to thicken up some of the pegs a little so they hold a little bit tighter but yeah so there you go there is his van mode it rolls extraordinarily well with these rubber tires very nice uh, let's do a 360 here I can't see too much benefit he'll get from Ripper labels to be honest but they always surprise me so we'll see pretty awesome it doesn't take a genius to see that he's very similar to his G1 van mode a little bit of an updated front end but nothing wrong with that very nice nonetheless now in terms of scale this guy tends to look really nice alongside your classics but I mean he just fits really nicely with the Autobot cars uh, if you have a classics Optimus Prime as I'm sure many collectors do he does feel a little bit small because he is a van compared to a semi but, uh, I mean, it's it's acceptable, I guess, if you're going this scale route. Um, this is the Fans Project trailer. Uh, it's unfortunate that while this works, these pegs inside here keep him from fitting in. If it wasn't for those pegs, he would have fit in perfect on the Fans Project trailer. You might need to fold in his mirrors here a little bit just to uh, get them to clear but yeah that's the only thing keeping them out of this fans project trailer so if you're not you know against modifying your third party toys and stuff you could make him fit perfect in this trailer like we saw with the mp10 pictures so that's an option of scale of course if you're like me or you're planning on getting it relatively soon you've got MP10 here who is coming to the US in just a few months oh, let's get his trailer on properly here so I can move him around there we go he scales brilliantly with MP10 I just feel like that's the perfect size for the van and it looks really good bot mode that's arguable there's always debates going on uh, about the scale of Optimus Prime and the other bots I think it works your opinion may vary um, as seen in the preview pictures if we open up MP10 here And we put this down he fits swimmingly inside no problems at all so if that's important to you it can do it here so let's go and start getting him to his robot mode first thing you're gonna do is take his extra gun which is hidden away just like that we'll take that off and then you're going to open 
these top panels here and I pull this out and I take these and I just kind of lift them up like this for now. Now the instructions show you pulling these apart kind of by like almost like folding it. Don't do that. There's pegs right here that are really fragile looking. So what you're going to want to do is find a good place where you can grip it and just kind of split it right in half so these pegs pull out completely straight. Don't don't turn it. That's going to shear off. Uh, one of my pegs actually already has a little bit of a stress mark from the very first time I transformed it according to the directions. Another reason I say the directions are junk. You can fold in these mirrors too. Um, I'm not going to show the reverse transformation but one thing to note is that if you're having trouble getting this back together uh, like I'm having now it might be because of how the hands are positioned inside it's a very very tight fit to get the arms between these two black pieces so make sure that that's what you have going on and once it's there um, everything should slide straight forward if you're having trouble with this you can always take these and they're just on a ball joint so if you're careful enough you can pop them off and uh, actually the first time I transformed it I had to do that so I could see this all better and then when you're sliding this in together when it gets caught up you can kinda see what you need to do see when the hands like this I can't move it but as soon as I move it up to that position everything just slides together so keep that in mind when you're working with this guy that you can pop these panels off uh, so far I haven't seen any like stressing or anything on here um, but once you get it the first time and you see it you probably won't have to do it again because you'll understand how you can manipulate the hand with this panel on with it being no problem so let's put this back on here alright so we pull this apart here and then you can twist it on down once it's all free now also make sure that you unpeg these panels here too they have this little T so you're kinda it, it's weird there's the T and there's this flap so you have to kinda pull back and up a little but just do that and get it out of the way and this does borrow a little bit of transformation from uh, both Classics Optimus Prime and Inferno uh, Inferno because of the shoulder flaps and Optimus Prime because he has a three sectioned waist but to me some people complain like oh they're ripping off the design again no because everything that is done other than this three tiered swivel and these arm things these are just exercises in things that worked and uh, yeah I mean this is a completely unique transformation so back on the legs we have these panels free you can just kind of fold them down just don't peg them back in place yet now what you're gonna do here is you're going to kind of rotate this waist piece here and we can unpeg everything now you can see there's this really strange bar joint here what you're gonna do is flip the roof in so it's like that that's gonna give you clearance to pass it pass the leg through and then you can start swiveling the leg around it's actually on let me see the best way I can show this to you it's actually got this three joint system here it folds all the way in and then it collapses down on top of itself using the knee joint pretty awesome so once you got that in place it's gonna look something like this for the leg you can take this open up the bumper flip the foot and you can close the bumper if you want you can leave it open if you want there are like pistons in here they're not colored but you can leave it like that now the instructions confused the heck out of me for how I was supposed to get this all to come together what you want to do is get this bar lined up in a way that you can close the side of the van over it and then it said push it I'm like well how's that happen well what you want to do is kind of give it that upward push so this bar goes and makes this triangle 
and then that'll let this sit pretty flush. There's nothing that clips in here. It just kind of sits, so uh, don't be trying to force anything like that. But it, once you get this, this was the scariest part of the transformation, in my opinion, the first time. And uh, once you've done it once or twice, it's actually not scary at all. Uh, kind of like the hegemon thing. Which brings me to another thought while I'm obscurely rambling. I do look forward to seeing what uh, Toy World is planning to do with their Optimus Prime that they're making. Because I have a feeling he's going to scale really nicely to this guy compared to uh, the MP10 and uh, Classic version. So, I just realized I'm rambling and I was off camera there. I'm sorry. I was just finishing up the leg. Okay, so once you have this, you just simply peg the uh, waist together. But first, let's move these uh, tires on in. You don't have to put them all the way forward. You can just leave them like that. That's what the instructions tell you to do. And do this. So, the next step we got to do, and this is why you need these all unpegged, is where we borrow from our MP Prime. And that's, we flip the top piece around like this. Or, did I say MP Prime? I meant Classics Prime. Of course, people outside are making all kinds of noise while I'm trying to film this today. There's some new neighbors across the street, and they're rather noisy. And one of my lights keeps going out. There we go. Anyway, then you take this shoulder assembly and you kind of flip it. Now, take these mirrors. They tell you to put the mirrors in earlier, but you kind of have to keep them out. And then once you have this pretty much in place, you can lower it. Because you can see, based on the assembly here, the mirror is going to be in the way as you're folding the arm in. Uh, I'll show you right here. If I put this in, it catches on the side so you do have to have it out push it in then push the mirror down you're pretty much done with the arms uh, you're just gonna take these and you can kinda hang them on the side on the back I like them on the back personally unfold his arm here and then flip it around now there were some complaints about his elbow I'll get to that when we go to the articulation side of things pretty shortly and we'll do it here and then the last thing to do is to flip his head up which rotates into place and then there's this little black hole right here that you plug this back piece into and there you go you've got an iron hide now the instructions do tell you to flip this open and have them on some kind of angled thing but the hinges in here are kind of scary so I don't even mess with them uh, I don't think it made too big of an aesthetic difference to just leave it uh, plugged in together. I will show you some things you can do with that after, but there you go. This is Ironhide in all his glory. He does have these little uh, chrome bits down here to help stabilize him a bit if you need it to. And he's looking pretty good. Now, strange things these panels here are on uh, pins so they can fold in but there's no steps in the instructions that tell you to do that well this is what you can do take this unpeg it again there's a mod out there you can do for this and I'm not sure if I want to do it because it's already hard enough but to get them back together uh, just because of how it wiggles but as you can see here there is some wiggle to this uh, assembly here and so clearly it was supposed to be engineered that those panels can be folded on in but it doesn't show up so what you need to do and it re require, requires unpegging the waist here and if you kinda are careful with it you can take this and you can fold them on in and it's just about rotating this bumper up at the same time as doing this and you are gonna have this plastic move a little bit but it's not the scariest of things to do um, I don't feel like it's stressing the plastic I may still go ahead and uh, 
do the mod that people say they said you just have to take off the bumper and just kind of uh, take off his bumper and just kind of sand a piece down and that's supposed to solve the problem and then you can see once we put this all back together you got a nicer looking uh, front of the bot it's a little makes his rib cage a little bit smaller there so keep that in mind if you want to do that I probably will end up doing the mod just cuz I don't know modifying expensive toys doesn't bother me all that much um, articulation you got 360 here you got an in and out here you've got an elbow that goes like this just a little bit over 90 and a wrist swivel now some people complained about the uh, elbow not doing much more than a 90 well if you're okay with seeing the screws on the outside you can flip his arm and aside from losing his uh, ports it doesn't look too horrible and you can actually get a pretty full range of motion out of it so I mean if you're just putting him on the shelf and want him to hold the gun like this there's really nothing wrong with having his arm mistransformed um, so that's an option if that's the type of thing you want to do head is on a ball joint very nice um, you do have a waist the legs are on ball joints so they're not gonna snap like Ultra Magnus did on me uh, you got an el uh, knee an elbow who taught me anatomy you got a knee and it, it works to an extent it does get in the way with this back panel but you can kind of move that um, the toes well, the foot piece is on a ball joint, so you can kind of rotate it around as you see fit. Um, he can stand fairly straight. I know most of the pictures kind of showed him standing like this, which gave some people some problems. But he can stand straight um, when you adjust these little chrome bits on the back here. And I'm not good at apparently getting him to stand straight right now but you can do it there we go so you can get him to stand straight with his legs not looking so weird of course having him in these you know more wide stance poses are okay um, I forgot he does have a swivel at the thigh there and swivels up at the top of his arm so you can get him into some really nice poses here uh, he also has and these are not shown in the instructions as far as I saw these little three millimeter peg things can be lifted up now on this side is nothing really except he does look kind of cool if you take his generation one thing and you can kind of put that on his wrist there. Um, the other side here actually has like a little communication thing, making it seem ideal to place his little radar dish on so he can be, you know, scanning for some cons or something like that. Whatever you want him to be doing. Now. I've seen some pictures, we're going to try this for the first time, I've never done this before, of people opening up this back and taking this and kind of plugging it on in here. And making like a, a big shoulder cannon for him. So that's pretty cool that you can do that if you want with that back assembly. And then let's give him some more weapons here. I think it's going to be time to replace the light soon. Oh man, that was hot. I just burned the crap out of myself, guys. <laughs> um, for this assembly, I can't figure out which way they intended you to use it. If you put it, if you want it on the top, you kind of have to use this one so that the plates are on the inside. And then he can hold them on the top. Personally, because of the way that this limits the 
the uh, limits the arm articulation I like to put them on the bottom and I think they look better when they're on the bottom they may not fit as nice though uh, but I do like how it looks when it's on the bottom and he's got that huge cannon that he's slung under his arm there and then you can of course give him his gun that he came with and you can just load this guy out half the fun of this guy is just messing with him and putting different accessories on him and uh, seeing what you can do with that if you want the saw blades or the cement gun things what you do is you take these and you split them and then you plug it in through the bottom of his hands like this and then when you take this the top piece and you put it back on it will kind of look like it transformed out of his arm and man I just really like how he looks when he's all armed up like that he's really a really fun uh, toy to mess around with so if you're wondering how he does for scale let's bring back our classics here and you can see he's pretty much the same size as Optimus so he does look pretty good on a classic shelf and we'll bring in little bumblebee so he does scale nicely with classics um, if that's your preference that Optimus is the same size as the other Voyagers he is a little bit more beefy than Optimus so he can kind of not fit in that's why I think the Toy World one's going to be pretty awesome here he is with uh, the, Ma the Masterpiece 10 Optimus again it's up to you whether you think that scale or not I like the scale of it personally but I'm still displaying them on my classic shelf anyway uh, and the last thing that I wanted to do for a comparison here is I wanted to show you guys I don't have Ratchet anymore I sold him and I used to have two iron hides I sold one of them and basically funded the uh, purchase of the PPs with these guys it's just a huge difference the chest is just way better um, no blue face that's <laughs> That's a big thing. And he's not so shrimpy looking. Not to mention that this guy's alt mode is just horrible. So anyway guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the review. I really have been enjoying this guy. I say he's definitely worth a pick up if he's in your price range. Uh, just be careful of a couple of the little pegs and stuff like that. Um, but he's really really a lot of fun to mess with. And uh, man it's been so hard to not ship my pile of loot with just ratchet in it because of how much fun I've had with this guy. So this is T2RX6 guys, thanks again and I'll see you next week.